This is a collaborative effort with DCNR and what we're using these treatments for is a way to measure the differences between deer and elk herbivory on regenerating forests. So we have six different sites. Um, at each site there are three treatments. The first treatment is a control, so there is no fence whatsoever. So deer and elk are able to forage freely in that treatment. The second treatment is a full exposure, so deer or elk are not able to get over the fence, so that is completely untouched by cervids. And the third treatment is an elk-only exposure. So that fence is held two feet off the ground so that deer can get underneath the forage, but elk cannot get in. Each treatment has a trail camera on it, and those trail cameras are set to take a picture every half hour for 24 hours a day. Uh, and that is just to uh, ensure the presence of deer and elk at each site. It's not to measure density, it's just to ensure that they're indeed there and foraging on what they should be foraging on. And all of this is so we can figure out what herbivory is attributable to elk and what is attributable to deer. It's very easy to blame one or the other when an area is recently timbered and all of the new growth is being obliterated by cervids, but we're not able to confidently say which, what damage is caused by what species. So by doing this project, we're able to figure out if in areas where deer and elk cohabitate, um, are their effects additive or compensatory? Every year we will take vegetation data um, in June when growth is at a maximum, and that will go on for the next several years for the foreseeable future. Now, my name is Avery Corendi and I am the Pennsylvania Game Commission's Elk Bio Agent.